Is Glozell's life and world were so chaotic. When you look at Glozell now, tell us how far she's come since the last time she was on the show. Glozell really is a superstar. I mean, she came in session one with her security blanket, <laughs> very nervous, not knowing what mm -hmm. to expect. And by the end of that first session, she was up and running with several strategies to help her. I mean, one of the things we first looked at were her attachment to all of these items, right? And working through that process of how to let that go by also having an attitude of gratitude, right? That mm -hmm. this was part of the chapter and we need to move on to the next mm -hmm. chapter, right? To create space, not only physically, but emotionally and mentally for other positive things to come into her life that were consistent with the goals that we were forming together. And so very quickly, she worked right at it. Um, and week by week was moving towards those goals and those steps so that she created a lot of space both professionally and personally, as you can see. I mean, really, the goal for all of us, right, in, in going into therapy is we see that it actually is a very safe, non judgmental space for people to be in where we work together creating these goals and giving people the tools to create happier lives so that they could live the best version of themselves. And she did it, she put in all the hard work. How do we effectively close? past chapters so that we can, quite frankly, move on to new chapters like Glozell is doing now. Yeah, and I think part of it is that you have to sort of let yourself go through the stages of grief because your attachment to objects is attached to something more meaningful than that. It's to a memory, to a person, to a special time in your life. And until you recognize that you have to go through that grief and yep, there's gonna be denial, there might be anger, and then reaching that state of acceptance, but honoring those past memories and then saying goodbye to them with a ritual. I've found that for certain clients, it's helpful for them to sort of have a very clear, objective delineation of this is goodbye. And so we'll actually make a ritual out of it. You know, whether they're saying goodbye to a memory, we go on a hike and then like at the top of the mountain, they read a letter and then they throw the letter away or making a whole ceremony out of going to donate something so you know it's going to help someone else. But I think that sometimes having that objective goodbye is really helpful for people to finally let go of it. You need to go through the process and work through it. If you don't and you avoid it, right, which sometimes is easier in the short term, it keeps nagging at you and coming up intermittently in all of your relationships because you're not doing the work to move past it and grow and to let it go. And as you know, Dr. Joe, there's still a lot of stigma out there about just getting help. People think that they shouldn't go unless they're completely crazy. You know, there's a lot right. of ideas out there, even though we've come a long way. So do you have any advice about how to get people to give it a try because Glossel's had an amazing transformation and she's living proof that it works. I do. I look at it as, you know, working on yourself, right? Going to the gym, eating more healthfully, working on your medical, emotional, physical, all those parts of yourself, right? If we're denying any piece of yourself, mm -hmm. we're not really going to live our best life. And so I think it can be very, very helpful. And it's a part of us that we really shouldn't deny. It's not scary. And before we say goodbye, Glozell, I'm curious, looking back, did you even realize at the time that professional help was something that you needed? No, not at all. I knew I needed help, but I always thought that therapy was for crazy people. And, I, and it's just kind of frowned upon. And I'm like, I didn't think I was, because I was functioning. You know, people still, oh, Glozell. They just don't, don't follow me home. You know, and my life was falling apart. However, I, I, I said, get the help. Dr. Joe was great. And I'm like, how do you know about a black woman? Like, he understood everything that was going on in my head. And <laughs> I'm like, what? Because at first I was like, I don't know. But it, it was great. I, I love him. And Gus goes also. We both go. I'm like, We're, let's start off as best we can with the, as much help as we can get. And it's been great. That's awesome. Well, best of luck. Lizelle, to you and Augustus, Dr. Joe, thanks so much for being here today.